to the survival brain, loss is the most painful experience and it will avoid loss at literally all costs because loss just means that now I have to utilize my resources again to get what I've already had. Hello, my gorgeous souls, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast. If you're watching me currently on YouTube as I film and record all these podcasts now, both on the mic and with Brennan's pride and joys, his two cameras from two different angles. You might see that I spilled my water before starting this episode, so please enjoy (laughs) a little bit of my clumsiness on camera. Anyway, I am super excited to be back in the studio recording because, you know, I haven't done one of these questions. I haven't answered one of these questions that you guys have submitted to me in a really long time. And I love that when I went to the archive of all of the submitted questions, you guys continue submitting them to me. I haven't answered one in a really long time. And I didn't know what I wanted this week's episode to be about, so I figured I would go into the archive. So thank you, thank you, thank you for submitting. And today's episode is brought to you by one of our listeners. I believe your name is pronounced Sri. And the thing about this question is that, unfortunately, the voice memo function kind of glitched with your question, so I had to take this from the transcript. can't actually pull your voice. It sounds very robotic for whatever reason. So I'm just going to go ahead and read out the question uh, myself rather than playing your voice. And then I'm going to go ahead and answer the question as well. Before we dive into today's episode, I just have a super quick announcement. I am hosting my free three-day live workshop called All In On Your Dream Life from October 10th through the 13th. And you can sign up for it literally right now. So if you are looking to unlock the codes to understanding the most important elements of manifestation, what actually makes manifestation work, elevate your self-image, improve your relationship to your self-worth, which is huge in the manifestation journey. If you want to become confident in your ability to manifest anything and everything in your life, like if you really want to wire your brain with the idea that anything is possible for you and you can literally make anything happen and you want to go all in on manifesting your dream life, we are going to do all that and so much more inside of this free live workshop. So you can go ahead and sign up for it by going to the show notes. So I'll drop the link in the show notes. It's going to be the easiest way to click and enroll. Or you can go to manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. That's manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. And I'm giving really epic prizes away just for participating. So literally coming in, participating in the free workshop. Yes, the free workshop is eventually going to lead into the Manifestation Babe Academy, which is my once a year launch of my big A to Z, big Bertha of a program where you literally learn everything you could possibly want to know about manifestation that I have put almost two decades of my knowledge of what actually works, what doesn't work, what works unique to you, because I customize it. I customize the manifestation journey unique to you. So what works, what doesn't work, and all that jazz. And you literally walk away completely transformed from this program. I'm super excited about that launch. I'm super excited about the workshop. If this is something that you're interested in, I will drop the link in the show notes, like I said, or you can go to manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. Okay, that's my announcement. Now, let me go ahead and read the question from Sri before I go into answering it, because then you guys will have context as to what I'm talking about. That would just make sense. Hi, Catherine. Thank you so much for all the work that you do. Your podcast has been so, so helpful for me to be to rewiring my money beliefs. And today's question is also going to be related to that. I feel like no matter how much money I manifest or hit my money manifestation goals, I'm never able to be happy with it or feel content that I've actually reached something. 
I'm always feeling like, okay, so now I've reached this milestone. I need to hit the next one. And I'm always just like, go, go, go. And I can never be happy or really allow myself to spend and just enjoy that. Because somewhere along the way, I'm just like, okay, if I can manifest all of this, then I can lose all of that as well. So I'm never able to stop and smell the roses or stop and smell the flowers in that way. Like I'm always just running and it feels very stressful and it doesn't feel like a happy feeling. And I want to understand how can I rewire this belief and what belief is causing this to begin with? Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I can so relate to this. And I know that so many of you out there can also relate to this as well. That feeling of not enough, it's never enough, no matter what. Even when we accomplish something or manifest something, it's immediately on to the next thing because, oh my God, what if this isn't enough? I need to go out and achieve and chase and bring in more and more and more and more until hopefully maybe one day there will finally be a number where it'll be enough for me or a feeling that I'm going to finally feel that is going to give me the sense of this finally being enough for me, right? This endless pursuit that unfortunately takes us into a downward spiral that never actually leads us anywhere except a constant vibration of chase, 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 chase. I can so relate to this, and I know that so many of you can also relate to this as well because it is a completely, I don't like to say the word normal because I like to question what normal is, but let's say it is an expected human experience. It's actually an expected spiritual experience as well, and I'll explain that all in today's episode. But first, I really want to read a quote by Janine Roth. Janine Roth has become one of my favorite authors who wrote one of my favorite books. You know how there's certain books? You guys know I'm an avid reader. I share so many book recommendations. If you follow me on Instagram, it's like nonstop books that I'm reading and referencing and quoting and recommending. There's just something about getting into the mind of someone else, getting into someone else's world and just reading their life experience. And like, if I had a superpower, you guys, you know how people always ask that question of like, if you could have any sort of superpower, what would it be? And most people say, oh, I want to be invisible. I want to fly. I want to teleport. I want to blah, blah, blah. For me, it's literally one superpower and one superpower only. It's the ability to download someone else's knowledge at the push of a button. (laughs) Like if I could just meet someone and they have like a modality or a science that they've studied or an expertise where I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. I want to know everything that you know. I want the ability to literally push a button and download all of their knowledge into my brain and just completely understand exactly what they understand about said topic. I mean, how cool is that? I feel like the next best thing, though, is reading books. So unfortunately, that's what I do is I read books to gain knowledge. And it's just something that is in my astrology chart, in my numerology chart. It's just such a part of me. I love it so much. So anyway, back to the point. Janine Roth wrote one of my favorite books, Women, Food, and God. And it has been so instrumental in helping me heal my relationship with food, heal my relationship with my body, really heal my relationship with my ability to feel my feelings and face uncomfortable things in life. It is a book that even though it references compulsive eating and like having negative self-image in terms of your body and struggling to lose weight and constantly being on diets and like the, the patterns that lead to that, it can be applied to so many more things, which is why I recommend this book to everyone, regardless of, you know, man or woman, regardless of what your issue is. If you have any sort of compulsion to engage in any sort of addiction or any sort of distraction in life, which in this book, she talks about food being a distraction, highly recommend. So anyway, the quote that I want to reference, the quote that is such a game changer that uh, she talks about in the book, I believe it's from this book. 
It could be from one of her other books. I'm not sure. I just pulled this off the internet because I remember reading it and I remember being like, this is the best quote I ever fucking read. Uh, sort of like one of the best. And I want to remember this. So I quickly Googled, you know, what I remembered and her name and it pulled it up. So she says, just imagine for a second waking up every single morning to your literal dream life. You have the career of your dreams. You wake up next to the partner of your dreams. You drive to breakfast in the car of your dreams. You pay for your morning coffee from the bank account of your dreams. And you and your family vacation in the dreamiest spots on earth. You are living a total vision board life. Well, you don't have to imagine anymore because my free three-day live experience is guaranteed to teach you how to make this your reality. And it's officially open for registration and we start really soon. If you're tired of getting wishy-washy results from wishy-washy manifestation content, now is your chance to learn from an actual expert who's been doing this for almost two decades now with tens of thousands of students and tens of thousands of testimonials and success stories. It's time to go all in on your dream life and manifest everything you've ever wanted. Head over to manifestationbabe.com slash go all in to sign up right now. Again, that's manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. And as an added bonus, I'm also offering some pretty epic prizes just for participating in the live event. Your dream life is waiting for you and it's time to make it your reality. Manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. Enough is not a quantity. It's not a number. It's not an amount. It's a relationship to what you already have. I'm going to read that again. Because this relates exactly to your question, Sri, and everyone else who has this issue of like, why the fuck does it never feel like it's enough? Why am I always focused on lack? Why am I always, always focused on, you know, what's wrong in the world? What's missing? What do I not have yet? The when I haves, when I finally have this amount of money, I'll finally be happy and all those things. Let me read this again to you. Enough is not a quantity. It's not a number. It's not an amount. It's a relationship to what you already have. That's it. That's the fucking key here. And I'll also add here to this quote, it's also a relationship to who you already are, right? Because how you feel about your external world is a reflection of how you feel about yourself. So here's the thing. This is why we do this crazy fucking batshit crazy thing, okay? I've explained this on a physical, like human, biological level many times. I'm just going to explain it one more time. And then I want to take it from a spiritual perspective because I feel like I haven't shared enough on why this is so on a spiritual level, like why this happens from a spiritual perspective And it was actually last weekend when I went to go see Bashar, which I don't know if you guys know who Bashar is. Bashar is apparently an extra extraterrestrial entity who is channeled by this man named Daryl. And he says some really good shit. My mom is obsessed with him. My mom sends me so many videos from Bashar. So when I saw that Bashar was in Sedona, which is literally two hours for me, I'm like, we got to go. We go to Sedona all the time. Let's go see Bashar. And so Bashar actually talked about this too. And I was like, oh my God, you're so right. That is so interesting from the spiritual perspective. It really goes hand in hand. So we as human beings are biologically wired to survive at all costs because if we don't survive, we don't procreate and then the human species dies, right? This makes sense. And part of survival is constantly being on edge and hyper vigilant around what is missing in our lives and what is wrong. Because if we're constantly focused on the positives and we're in kumbaya and everything is great, we have no drive within us 
as cave women and cave men to go out and hunt and gather food, right? If we're not constantly on edge looking for threats or what could be potential threats, then we die. We simply do not survive. If we're not constantly looking at our relationships with other other people in the tribe, other people in the village, and not not presenting ourselves in a certain way to appeal to the other villagers or the other tribesmen, then we could be kicked out of the village. We can be kicked out of the tribe. We can be kicked out of the cave. And therefore, we do not survive because back then being alone was way less powerful than being in a group. So we're constantly looking for what's missing and what's wrong. And that is just our prehistoric brain. Okay, there's the reptilian brain that you have. We all have a limbic brain, which is the emotional brain, reptilian brain, which is literally instincts, um, both part of the subconscious mind. And then we have our prefrontal cortex, which is the conscious mind, which is the logical mind, the imaginative mind, the analytical mind, this higher mind that has evolved over time where we are able to do more complex things rather than just breathe and like eat food and, you know, poop and have sex, right? (laughs) And, And have emotions. We can experience more complex things. And so we... The the reptilian brain is always focused on what is missing and what's wrong. And that's why it's so easy for us in our modern day and age, because we have so many more luxuries than we ever had before. We can literally door dash food to our room we can or home. We can literally order anything on Amazon. We can make social connections on the internet. We literally don't have to leave our house to talk to people. We can FaceTime people, right? We have dating apps. Like we really don't have to work as hard to have access to the things that help us survive, right? And so our brains are fucking bored. And now our brains are just focused on, oh my God, I don't have enough money. I don't have nice enough clothing. I don't have as many friends as I want. And oh my God, I'm afraid I'm going to lose everything, right? Once we feel like we do have something, then it's like, oh my God, I have to hold on because now I'm afraid of losing it. And that's the whole other thing is to the survival brain, loss is the most painful experience and it will avoid loss at literally all costs because loss just means that now I have to utilize my resources again to get what I've already had. And the subconscious mind, the reptilian brain, wants to preserve as many resources as possible. So the fact that something can be lost is a really bad thing. It's a really negative thing. It's like, oh my God, we are wasting our resources now and now you're definitely going to die. (laughs) Okay, so that's like the extreme that our brains take this to. But on a spiritual level, this is what's interesting is that there's no such thing as loss. On a spiritual level, Even if spiritually there's no such thing as loss, on a physical 3D level, our survival brain only sees loss, right? It's constantly concerned about loss. But on a spiritual level, it's just an illusion and it's not actually possible to lose anything. The reason being is because energy cannot be created or destroyed. You already just have the energy to create whatever it is that you want to create. Everything is created from your energy, right? And so... To say that something is lost once you have something, think about the fact that if you, let's say you made a million dollars and let's say you actually lost the million dollars from a physical 3D tangible perspective, let's say something happened, right? You gambled it away, someone stole it, you made a bad business deal, you made a bad investment, the million dollars is gone. And from the 3D physical tangible perspective, you're like, oh no, I lost all this money. The thing is, is that it's actually not lost because you had a particular frequency that created that million dollars. That million dollars was not created from thin air. It was created from your vibrational frequency. It was created from the beliefs that you held about money, the thoughts that you had about money, the feelings you had about money, the skill sets that you had that allowed you to create that, the connections that you created in order for you to create that money, the service that you provided to people to solve some sort of problem, to create that money, that stuff is actually what created the money in the first place. Because all of that is coming from the energy that you have within that cannot be destroyed, okay? 
So as you gain all of these skill sets, this frequency, these beliefs, these thoughts, these things that contributed to you making a million dollars, it can never, ever, ever be taken away from you. That's why people who, you know, have become millionaires and then they find themselves bankrupt, they actually are able to, there's so many stories like this, they actually recreate that money plus so much more and they do it so much faster than they ever did before because now they have the fucking skill sets to do it. But our physical 3D tangible brains, our, you know, from the human perspective, the reptilian brain doesn't fucking understand this. And so that's why we feel this way. So now that we get this from like the human evolution, caveman days perspective, let's talk about why we are so focused on not enough, why it's so easy for us to get sucked into not enough from a spiritual perspective. So from a spiritual perspective, on a soul level, at your very core, the deepest, wisest, highest level of you already knows and understands that you are enough, okay? You are enough. You've always been enough and always will be enough. There is absolutely nothing you can or cannot do to destroy this about yourself. It's another thing that you just have and it cannot be created or destroyed. It's just innately given to you. It's just innately part of your existence. If you exist right now, then you are enough. Like that's, that's the truth right there. Okay. And every single soul understands that they are abundant in their true nature. So what then changes when we incarnate? Why is do, why do so many people struggle with abandonment issues, with worthiness issues, with deservingness issues, with imposter syndrome, right? It seems like it runs fucking rampant and there's a humongous personal development industry that exists, which is a great thing. But the reason why so many people in the personal development space are in business, including myself, is because... So many people struggle with these issues. So what the fuck is happening here, right? What is going on? So here's the thing. And this has been talked about by my shaman. So many people out there who practice ancient spirituality will also mention this. Like this is a very core spiritual truth. Our number one purpose in our lifetimes, in each lifetime, because I believe we have many lifetimes, our soul mission, our primary lesson is to remember who we truly are. That's it. We unremember, we fucking forget, and our whole primary purpose, if you ever want to know what, Catherine, what is my life purpose? Can you tell me? Yes. Remember who you are. (laughs) My shaman repeats this to me like a broken record because Every time I'll hear like someone else ask like, what's the purpose of this? What's the point? Or like, why is this happening? And he'll always say, well, you need to remember. Like that's the whole fucking point is you need to remember who you are. We forget our infinite nature. We forget our limitless connection to source. We forget our boundlessness. We forget our enoughness at our deepest, deepest core. We forget how fundamentally perfect we all are in this tapestry of life. And the whole point of every lifetime is for us to remember. So how does this occur? So the brilliance of the human experience, you know, being a spiritual being, coming into human form, is that we all have this veil put on. Now, we can talk about this scientifically, which you've heard me mention many, 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 many times, where um, from the ages of zero to seven years old, we're literally walking, absorbing subconscious minds. So we don't really have that critical factor that allows us to tap into our critical thinking, our analytical mind, question things, right? This is why it's so easy for kids to believe in Santa Claus. Versus if you at the age of 30 were told, you know, by the way, there's a big fat man that comes through your chimney and delivers gifts to you every single uh, year on Christmas, you'll be like, what the fuck? No, like how? You know what I mean? Like you would you would have a lot of questions about this. (laughs) You would question this concept. But kids don't. 
right? And that's how all of our beliefs are passed down from our parents, from other adults in our lives is because we don't have this ability to question. We literally don't have the barrier between our conscious minds and our subconscious minds. We really don't have our conscious minds online yet. And from the spiritual perspective, it's looked at as a veil because kids, if you'll notice, depending on how you know sensitive your child is, you may notice your child, I notice this within my kid all the time, they seem to all have imaginary friends, right? Or they seem to be looking at things or describing things to you or just saying random shit. Like, I love this series on social media where moms will post their children's talking about past lives. Like, oh, hey, mommy, I was your mommy last time. And I remember being your mommy. And, you know, the parents are always like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, is my kid crazy? No, your kid literally doesn't have the veil yet between the human world and the spiritual world. And so they're able to take in all of this input from the spiritual world. But then somewhere between the ages of three and seven, and the reason why I say three is because free will actually comes in around three years old, the veil comes down and we forget who we truly are. You'll never find a child, you know, with the exception of extreme abuse. I understand there's, you know, exceptions here, but let's say a healthy child raised in a healthy family, you'll find that these kids have boundless, boundless imaginations and they don't struggle with self-worth. They don't struggle with questioning if they're enough or not. Every single baby that comes into the world, they don't even question like, hmm, am I worthy of having milk? Like, am I worthy of being fed today? Am I worthy of having my diaper changed? No, they're like, fuck you, woman, change my diaper, feed me, right? Like they they scream if you don't. They demand it. That's how much worth they know is available to them. But around that age, we have to forget because it's part of our agreement is that we would sign this contract, plan out, you know, a certain amount of lessons and things and themes to occur in our lifetimes you know, with free will, of course, because we can also then create whatever it is that we want in between those themes and things like that. Then we also sign the contract to forget all of this, right? About ourselves, about who we are, about our soul families, about our spiritual nature, about the fact that we are enough, we're worthy, we are loved, we are perfect just the way that we are. And we literally like have this experience where we're like, hmm, what lessons can I conjure up for myself in the life in the next lifetime that will really make me forget that I'm enough? Let me have an abusive father. Let me get abandoned by my mother. Let me get put up for adoption, right? Like all these things, we literally sign contracts, soul contracts, and make agreements because then we really, wow, like I would learn really quickly. Like I would learn a lot. I would come out of this lifetime really remembering who I am because I forgot to such an extreme degree. Okay. I feel like I'm getting a little too tangity here now or a little too deep into this. So I want to start kind of pulling it back and wrapping up. So if we never forgot this, if we've never had an agreement with this to do this, then we don't have to remember. And then there's no point to the human experience because why the fuck did we come into the human experience? Then we can just be souls and just remember how perfect we are and just lollygag in the spiritual plane. But we sign up for earth school because it is such an incredible path to our soul evolution. So of course you experience not enoughness, Sri, and everyone else, right? Of course you do, because you're not only wired to be this way on a human level, you're also wired this way on a spiritual level, right? And it's to serve both survival-based you know, programming from millions of years ago or however long this programming is, you know, people argue all the time, like we don't really know how old the earth is. We don't really know how old humans actually are. We're constantly finding out through the different testing that is available to us, but no one actually knows, right? And and like my shaman says, we're so much older than, or like the history of the planet is so much older than, than they're telling us. So, but that's like a little might be a little too deep for some people. Um, And so this also, this programming of not enoughness serves us on a path of remembering who we are as divine creators in human form. 
So going back to the Janine Roth quote, okay, enough is not a quantity. It's not a number and it's not an amount. It is a relationship to what you already have. So you have to actively nurture your relationship to what you already have. This is one of your soul lessons now, okay? And it's going to be so easy for you to move the goalpost. This is why it's so easy for us to move the goalpost. It's so easy for us to complain and to criticize ourselves and to fear losing our manifestations and to fear losing the money and to fall into the traps of scarcity and fear and lack. It's so easy. It's the laziest mindset you can have. Why do I say that? It's because it's a default program. It's the default mindset. You really don't have to work hard. You know, people say like, oh, no, I don't. I'm not an optimist. I'm a realist. You know, I'm pessimistic because I'm a realist or whatever. It's like, great. So you're telling me you're the laziest fucking person in the world because you have the laziest mindset that one can have. And I I understand like it's harsh when I say that, but it's fucking true being an optimist and being focused on abundance and believing that anything and everything is possible takes some active participation. And that's part of the remembering process. Because if there was no active participation, you guys, then there would be no point to life. Do you see what I mean? So it's not something to flex to have a negative mindset, let me tell you that, because it doesn't say anything positive about you. Because then you're just succumbing yourself to the default programming of like, you don't have to accomplish much or do much in life to have that kind of mindset. So just understand that, yes, it's going to take active participation. It's going to take work. It's going to take a rewiring process, but it's fucking worth it. Because at the end of the day, when you fully feel into enoughness and you understand that you already are enough and everything you have is already enough and have gratitude for what you have, life on a whole different level opens up to you. So actively nurturing your relationship to what you already have looks like a word that I already said that we hear over and over and over again in the personal development space to the point where we just don't even like, it just flies over our heads now. It's just like, oh yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, sounds nice. Great. Okay, cool. No, it is the core of this work, which is gratitude. Okay gratitude, 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 appreciation is everything. It is a perspective that is the most healing perspective that you can have because gratitude is understanding that, for example, someone out there right now, someone out there right now is looking at your body and looking at your quality of life and your health and praying for the same. Okay. Someone out there right now is looking at the breakfast that you ate this morning that you're like, ah, it's like the same old, same old, same old shit I eat every single day, nothing special. They're looking at your breakfast and fucking drooling and wishing they can have a bite of your breakfast, right? There's someone out there who is looking at the bank account that you complain about, the bank account where you're like, oh, it's not enough. It's not enough. I wish I had more. Oh, I can't buy, I, I can't buy this house. I have to settle for this house instead, or I can't do this. I have to settle for that instead or whatever. Or, oh my God, like the business that I have, like I only have 12 clients. I should have 20, blah, blah, blah. Someone out there is praying for your business account, for your bank account, for your life, your whole life. There's every single aspect of your life that someone out there is wishing to have. That's what gratitude's about, is understanding that in perspective, we are all already multi, hundred, quadrillion, bazillion billionaires, okay? We're all incredibly wealthy because the moment we understand that we are literally source expressed as human beings, we have won the fucking lottery because from that perspective, anything is possible for us. From that perspective, knowing that we are divine creators of our own realities coming from where we already are and there's nothing we have to do to earn it, to deserve it, to be worthy of it, we have won the game of life. Simple as that. So gratitude is all about having perspective and understanding that what you have is already enough. 
It's already enough. And you know what's so cool that comes out of the frequency of gratitude that I always think about? Because when you're in appreciation, what frequency do you put out into the world? I already have enough. I already am enough. So what gets matched is more and more and more that makes you feel the same. When you're constantly focused on I'm not enough, I don't have enough, I don't have, I don't have, you only attract lack into your life. So a lot of people think like, well, if I get complacent where I already believe I have enough and I appreciate what I have, isn't that that being me being complacent and sending a message to to the universe that I shouldn't be given more? And it's actually very much the opposite because the universe will only reflect the frequency that you put out. So it's not reading you and then being logical about it and being like, oh, she wants more money. That's why she keeps complaining about not having money. So I should give her money. No, it's literally like, oh, you don't have money and you're constantly complaining about not having money. Got it. I'm going to give you more to complain about. I'm going to give you more to feel lack toward, to feel like you don't have enough with. Got it. So it's a literal mirror. This is all the energy. When I read energy, when I, when people give me their problems or give me their situations and I read the energy of it and tell them where they're being blocked, this is exactly what I do. I have to become an exact mirror and see what am I sending back to them. They're giving me something and I got to send it right back, right? So that's how I read the energy behind situations is I become a literal mirror. So all of this to say, and this is a much longer episode than I anticipated, but I feel like I channeled some really good stuff through uh, today. So all of this to say is please don't be so hard on yourself, okay? As it's completely expected to have moments of scarcity and lack. It's expected. It's part of life. It's part of the lessons we came here to learn is to realize that we are literal abundance in human form. Abundance is our natural state. We are enough just the way that we are. We are worthy just the way that we are. That's part of the game. And to feel the opposite is like it's it's supposed to happen in order for us to come back to who we truly are, in order for us to come back to the purpose of being on this planet in the first place. So your job, your sole purpose, and your sole mission is to consistently remember how much you already have and that what you already have is enough because you are enough. And you don't have to keep proving your enoughness to yourself by constantly trying to chase enoughness because it's actually already within you. There's nothing out there that you're reaching for. There's nothing out there that's going to make you fill that void that you feel within. It's only drawing in on yourself that's actually going to fill the void. So Sri and everyone listening, the rewiring process begins with answering this simple question, okay? Ask this as many times per day as possible. What am I grateful for right now? And how can I appreciate even more of what I already have? Shift your focus here because I'll tell you, this is the rewiring work, is your focus is going to go on not enough. Your focus is going to go on fear of losing it right? Your focus is going to go there, but your job is to redirect it. So when you have those thoughts, you immediately go, wait a second, wait a second. What do I have? What can I appreciate? What can I be grateful for? And the more you do that, the more you start building more and more neural connections that represent gratitude and appreciation. And you start to prune that million, bazillion year old connection from the collective consciousness of fight or flight, survival, fear, lack, scarcity. That's how it's done. It's a process where you recognize yourself in the moment when you're having those moments of scarcity and lack and fear, fear of loss and things like that, or that's not enough or moving the goalpost or ah, uh, I just feel like I need to make um, another million dollars. Like the, the one million is not enough. I need two now. Once I get to two, mm, it doesn't feel like it's enough. I need 20 now. I need $20 million. When you have those moments, it's not about criticizing yourself or being hard on yourself. It's just like, oh shit, like I'm being a human again. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Right. 
and then shifting your focus. Hold on a second. Can I just celebrate and appreciate this million dollars or even this one dollar or a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars, whatever amount that we're talking about here? Can I just come back and bring myself back into the present moment? Because Everything is created in the present moment in the first place. The future that you're worried about, the past that you're resentful of or sad about is literally a figment of your imagination. It doesn't exist. If I go outside right now and I look for the past or I look for the future, I look for yesterday or I look for tomorrow, I'm going to be looking like a fucking crazy person because I'm looking for something that is a figment of my imagination. And it's only the now that exists. And appreciation, gratitude brings you to the now, which is where manifestation occurs in the first place. This is why this is such a powerful manifest, manifestive, manifestative energy. Just making up words every single day. Don't mind me. So anyway, this is how you rewire it. So I hope you love this episode. I hope this answer was helpful for you. Remember uh, to join my free three-day live experience called All In On Your Dream Life. It is a workshop where I'm taking you through unlocking the codes of manifestation, raising your self-image, improving your relationship to your own enoughness and your worthiness, and going all in on your dream life and literally quantum leaping into that dream life that you just desire and think about all the time. I'm going to show you how to bring it into the present moment and how to make it real inside of this free live workshop. So you can go to manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. That's G-O-A-L-L-I-N, go all in. Or you can click the link in the show notes as well, which will probably be the easiest way to do it. And if you want to submit your question to be answered in a future podcast, which I had so much fun with this, so thank you so much, I'm going to drop the link for that as well in the show notes. And with that being said, I will catch you inside of my free workshop or in the next episode. Love you so much. Bye.